guys this is Kishan and this video is on Pragma Autonomous Transactions. So we will try and understand what are Autonomous Transactions, where they are helpful and how to use them. Yeah, so first of all what are Pragma Autonomous Transactions? An Autonomous Transaction is an independent transaction that is initiated by other transaction and it executes without interfering with the parent transaction. So what it basically says it. An autonomous transaction is initiated or it is started or called by a parent transaction but it doesn't commit or roll back when a parent transaction commits a rollback. You know it's a transaction within a transaction which is independent of the parent transaction. So the parent transaction might end up doing a commit or doing a rollback but this will not affect the autonomous transaction. The autonomous transaction would have its own commit or rollback in it and that set of transaction or that set of queries uh, will be uh, independent of the calling parent transaction. We will just see that with an example that's uh, very simple and we'll get what is it so uh, let's uh, uh, look at this keyword pragma so what is pragma pragma is a compiler directive or hint uh, it is used to provide instruction or information to the compiler and pragma the best part about pragma is it is compiled at uh, uh, it is processed at compile time when they pass the necessary information to the compiler they are not processed at runtime so where is pragma autonomous transaction used the very common place where you will be using pragma autonomous transaction are procedures which will log your errors you know you have a set of uh, uh, business rules you are going to implement in a function or a procedure and then if there is any uh, if there is an error raised anywhere in that procedure or function you want to log it so say suppose there are 15 steps that you are going going to do in a procedure your main business rules or anything say somewhere in the 15 steps you reach an error at the seventh step on the seventh transaction you get an error the first six are uh, the first six are executed you need to roll them back and you need to uh, in you need to lock that error that you have got into a table so what you will do is you will create a uh, autonomous transaction that will do this logging part and you will call this autonomous transaction in the exception area of the procedure so that you can do a rollback which will roll back all your uh, main business rules in the procedure and there will be an autonomous transaction which does a commit and it inserts into the error table. I will just show you that in a demonstration. So over here first of all I am creating an error log table. I am taking the date of the, of the error and taking the message and the code. So I have created this table as you can see the table is created now I am creating an autonomous transaction to create an autonomous transaction you need to declare it as pragma autonomous whether it's a procedure or a function a store procedure or a function or a package procedure or a function or you know locally declared procedure function which are in the declare segment of a procedure function or a PLSQL anonymous block so you can declare pragma autonomous transaction to all of those so what you need to do is you need to write this keyword pragma autonomous transaction so what happens is this procedure now this P log procedure that I have created which accepts a message parameter and a P code parameter and what it does it simply does an insert into the log table so that every time you don't need to write this insert statement you just call this procedure as you see I have done a commit here so what would happen is uh, this procedure would be called from the main parent transaction but as it is an autonomous transaction what happens to the parent transaction whether that is rollback or commit will not matter you can this procedure because it is declared as autonomous transaction over here would be committed because this is autonomous transaction it, it has a commit here uh, this block this begin block will get committed unless it raises an error so this is say suppose my business logic procedure say suppose uh, this is my PLSQL block which has my business logic so uh, there is this begin part whatever happens here over here I have an exception I do catch the exception in others as in others and I call this procedure I call this autonomous transaction procedure which I just declared about P log error this is what I have made over here which will take this parameters and insert into this table and which is an autonomous transaction and over here as you can see after logging after calling that uh, procedure I am doing the rollback why the rollback is say suppose this first statement is executed 
then the second statement has failed. But when the second statement fails, it would not roll back all the previous statements. You need to do a manually. You need to write a rollback and roll them back. So what I'm doing is over here. I'm rolling it back. But you, if if this procedure over here is not uh, declared as a pragmatic number, and if it doesn't have this commit inside, then it would roll back even the insert. But I don't want that to happen. I want the insert. I want this insert into the lock table to happen. But I want the other things to be rolled back. So what I have done is I have done that error logging in a procedure and an autonomous transaction. I have committed that. So as the statement says, the autonomous transaction, which is this one, is independent of the parent transaction. So this is the parent transaction which is calling it. This PLSQL block is the parent one which is calling. So it is independent of that. Whatever happens apart from this is independent of uh, the autonomous transaction. So I did a commit inside this autonomous transaction, so that will commit. But that will not commit any of the uh, statements of this parent uh, PLSQL block. The parent blocks are different and the autonomous blocks are different. It is, it would uh, act that way. The parents are different and the child is uh, this autonomous transaction is a uh, different transaction. So you can do a commit or rollback for this autonomous transaction without affecting or being affected by the parent transaction. So over here, I am doing an update. I am, uh, say, suppose det detecting 333 from the salary of uh, the employee whose first name is Steven. And I am trying to get the first name and last name of the employee with the first name is Steven. Just for starters, I want to tell you that this would give an exception because there are two records with Steven, first name is Steven. So what will happen is when this will be executed, this block will be executed, it will raise an exception, it would come here and call our error log procedure. So just let me execute it and show you. So I'm executing this procedure. It says uh, it has executed successfully. And this is the error log. So as you can see, if the date is logged, the error message exit has written more than number of closes and the error code has been logged. Now let me see what is select staff from employees. See over here the salary is unchanged. 24,000 and 22,000. 24, they are not changed. So this rollback has worked. This rollback has rolled back the statement which failed and even the error logging procedure, this P error log has done the uh, locking properly and have committed that. So I wanted my error to be committed but I don't want the failed procedure blocks to commit. So that has been rolled back over here as you can see and over here you have this error log. Now say suppose what if I have not declared this uh, procedure as autonomous transaction. Let me just make this procedure again. Let me just delete data from the error log table so it doesn't confuse us. Now let me see select star from error log it is empty. As you, can see, as you can see in this employees table, the salary is 24,200. Now I have not kept the error logging procedure, procedure as, a, as a tra autonomous transaction. Say it has a commit over here. So what will happen is, so what will happen, let's see. I have executed this block. When I see the employees table, what I see is the salary have been decreased. 3,300 have been removed from both of this. And I have the error locked in my error table. So what happened is, this first statement got executed from a PLSQL block. The other statement got executed which raised an exception. It came into the raise exception. It called this procedure. Now this procedure has an insert to the lock table and it has a commit. So what happened is, when this commit got executed, it committed all the, even the parent and even the calling transactions were committed. But we don't need that, we don't need this transaction to commit, you know, this should not commit. And over here, the error has been logged and it has committed and then it has rolled back. But this rollback would take any effect because as soon as this procedure was called, the last statement is in this procedure is a commit. So it gets committed and then it gets rolled back. So nothing gets rolled back basically. So you might face such scenarios. To so avoid it, we need to make this pragma autonomous transaction. Yeah, so now say suppose if I have not kept this commit over here, 
if I don't have this commit over here and now what happens now see as I told you there is no pragmata on this transaction even there is no commit there is one record in our error log table and our salaries have been changed this is 2367718 now when i execute this procedure now what is let's see what happens we have one log this is a previous one there is no new log recorded and when i see the employees table i have no change in the salaries also so what happened is the first statement got executed update one then the second statement raised an error it came in exception log it went to this log table it went to log table and it executed the procedure but this procedure doesn't have a commit anymore i have just commented the commit and it's not a pragmata anonymous transaction so there is nothing it just inserted into this log table and after that it it got a roll back so what happens is this i got executed the first statement the second one failed exception log raised the error is locked but then it get rolled back because of this roll back over here even the child transaction even this procedure gets a roll back so now you run the procedure so what you just now saw is either you, you run this procedure and it doesn't get committed or when it gets committed it even commits the update statement which you don't want to commit so this is an utmost requirement of uh, of pragmata anonymous so what you simply do is create a procedure with pragmata anonymous transaction which would insert into the log table you commit that now as it is a pragmata anonymous it will not affect any of its parent transaction it will only commit this insert statement and then whatever you do with your parent transaction you do a roll back over here it is fine it doesn't roll back the or the, the statements which are in the autonomous transaction so this is the beauty of an autonomous transaction you have an independent transaction in in a whole set of transactions you know you have some independent transaction which are not affected by the calling or the parent transactions so this is it for pragmata anonymous transaction if you need to know anything more please do let me know in the comments please do like share and subscribe thank you